prose, at least 10 at this count, uh, including the novel Sapphire Dawn, a new and selected poems titled Provence, a memoir, WMD, an earlier memoir, Marathon. Uh, he was a writer in residence as a Fulbright scholar at the American University in Bulgaria. And for his work in the culture of Bulgaria, he was accorded Bulgarian citizenship by degree of the president and parliament in 1996. Richard has taught at several institutions and colleges and universities, including Catholic University of America, Creighton University, Mount Vernon College, and Connecticut College. He directed the Penn Syndicated Fiction Project and created the NPR radio program, The Sound of Writing, serving as writer, director, and host. Um, and let me turn it over now. Richard Hartice, please welcome. Sunil is such a lovely guy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sunil, for that nice introduction. Um, and thank you for hosting us here today. What a beautiful space you've created. It's great what the Writer Center has been doing. Um, one of the projects that we have at the Meredith Center is a William Meredith Award for Poetry. And I'm very happy to say that Natasha Trethaway, who was the US Poet Laureate most recently, uh, was given the Penn Oakland uh, Josephine Miles Award for Poetry, uh, just, just announced a couple of days ago. So you'll see her little chapbook over there. It's a beautiful little book. And there are examples of other um, uh, award-winning books from Lubomir Levchev. Um, and Andrew Orkey, who was a Peace Corps uh, director, and he passed away in 2013, but his book is here as well. So uh, t please take a look. They're all for sale. We just. Uh, now, Elis Elisavieta Ritchie, we've just published her new book, Guy Wires, which is uh, here on the table. And if any of you want to follow along with um, her as she reads her poetry, she, when she gets up here, she can distribute it to anybody that raises their hand, something like that. Um, it's a beautiful book. I really highly recommend it to you. Um, <clears throat> we are also going to be publishing her book, uh, Babushka's Beads, which is coming up shortly, which is a kind of... Uh, well, a kind of genealogy uh, in poetry of her Russian heritage. She mm -hmm. said she could have married a prince, and she certainly could have. Um, she's a princess herself. The, um, well, you'll see all the other works here. This, we have two artists as well. Nancy Frankel, who's a sculptor, a local sculptor. Uh, she's also vice president, well, she's uh, the treasurer of the William Meredith Foundation. These are her works here. This is a painted steel. Still work. And this is uh, Sister Moon. And what do you call this one, Nancy? Clarity. Clarity. Mm -hmm. Clarity. So we're going to do a multi-art presentation here. We also have Katia Zirankova, who's done this wonderful mm -hmm. painting called Katia. Builders of pyramids. Builders of pyramids, and you can see them here. It's a beautiful work. She's just come from New York, uh, where she's had an exhibition, and uh, they wanted to keep a lot of her works, so we only get to see one today, but I recommend her to you as well. My sister, Barbie, when we were children, I told this once before, the similar uh, program that we had, Bank Square Books and Mystic, but she, um, when we would get these Whitman samplers for chocolates at the holiday period, you know, they have the legend there of which one is a cream or a walnut or a cherry or whatnot in the box. But that wasn't good enough for her. She would take the chocolate, poke her finger <laughs> to see if she liked it. And if she didn't, she'd put it back in the box. So when you would be eating, you'd pick it up and what is this? You'd go, mice in here or what? <laughs> so today you have a really lovely Whitman sampler of some very fine poets. And um, there are a number of us, so we're going to limit to the reading, uh, you know, the sort of the virtual hook will come out if we begin to get too much longer than 10 minutes each. Uh, and Daniel Levanti, whose book has just been published by our little press, a uh, very talented musician, as you'll see, and he's going to sing his poetry for us. Um, so I think without any further ado, I will introduce Tom Curlin. I'm going to make these brief introductions. But uh, this is a book that we published of Tom's. And this is Nancy's sculpture on the cover. Mm. Beautiful mm. work. Mm. 
The author, a lapsed farmer and Miami fundamentalist, is a reluctant transcendentalist. Raised in Iowa, he ate rolled oats with horses, taught at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and studied on a National Endowment for the Humanities Fellowship at Yale. After moving to Washington, D.C., he won the Larry Neal Award for Poetry, received a grant from the District of Columbia, Commission of the Arts, and studied at Griffith. Following policy work on energy and environment during a decade of UN climate change negotiations, he helped rebuild and served as vice president of the nonpartisan Center for the Study of the Presidency. He, he and his wife Catherine collected and edited the, re, the recipes and stories in the Smithsonian Folk Life Cookbook. They and two daughters live in Washington, D.C. So we're really happy that we were able to get Tom's work. He, you know, his day job was a very important day job, but his night job was being a poet, <laughs> and we're finally glad that he has seen the light of day with this first collection. So Tom, without any further ado. Thank you, Richard and Sunil and the Virus Center, as well as the many, many good uh, guests here today and the wonderful works of art, uh, multidimensional uh, and others. I want to read about four or five poems, and I think given the holiday season, a good place to start is with delivery. We we'll have many people at our doorstep delivering things, so I want to deliver all but one thing which you'll hear at the end of the poem. This arrives by snail mail, surface, occupant, Breaks a trim nail, opening fresh mail stacked atop a mahogany end table. The postman claims it's unmarried labels like hers that gum up his quick delivery of seed catalog mailers. But I say, the vanities of love have come to this. Extraordinary men pressed into blue suits without sense or lunch pail are delivering all the wrong news to women untutored in the dark art of wrapping green tomatoes against winter. So year after year, the holidays fall between us, our arms sandwiched in Christmas elevators, holding tight to both sides of a package of breath, whose firm promise somehow slips until ribbon after ribbon, bright with indifference, wraps around our steel blue heads, while the heart, its hammer stammering, that some cursed stranger goes off, pointed straight at you, and I drop dead. But this marriage drifts on ahead through a blizzard of kind kisses, because love rages on, even in its winter bed, so long as we refuse to stand at salvation's corner, <clears throat> dressed in red underwear, with nothing but a pocket for a heart and a bell in our head. So yes, everything your torn heart and my unwrapped arms ever said is forgiven, except pity, which lifts its brass tongue neither in joy nor lament, but to smile another fake smile at it, the stay-at-home Santa who nickels and dimes our families to death. It's Christmas for you without the pity.